Well, consent has to be documented, but it also has to be informed. And informed means you have to understand what you're consenting to. You needed to be walked through in great detail all of the issues that were relevant to you on the psychological and medical front, all the options that were available to you, and the pros and cons of all those options. I can't see in any possible way that that could have been done with any degree of thoroughness in something under six months of weekly therapy. And I would say that's an absolute minimum to walk anyone through something as complicated as what you laid out. The problem with me starting it so young was not only that I couldn't consent, I couldn't really fathom the full, just the full picture of things. You know, I'll never be able to breastfeed. Um, I'll never have that erogenous sensation in my chest back. I do, I do hate to speak about it, but I'm experiencing sexual dysfunction at the age of 18. That's something that women usually go through when, when they're in their 40s to 50s. How is I supposed to know? At the age of 12, I started experiencing some gender dysphoria and um, I started seeing a therapist and I got the diagnosis and I started going on the path of medical transition at the age of 13, starting with blockers and then moving on to hormones. And at 15, I got a double mastectomy, but it turned out that it wasn't the best decision for me. And I stopped transitioning at the age of 16. Um, I had a fairly early puberty actually started um, I started developing at, at around the age of nine, if not a little bit earlier. It, it was really difficult for me, actually. Boys and girls experience, before puberty, experience approximately the same levels of negative emotion. So that would be primarily anxiety and emotional pain, or even sometimes susceptibility to physical pain. And emotions like frustration and disappointment and shame and guilt and self-consciousness are all part of that, what would you call it, network of negative emotion. Now what happens to girls when they hit puberty, and no one knows exactly why this is, is that their negative emotion levels go up. And so that on average, women, biologically mature women, are more sensitive to negative emotion than biologically mature men. And that kicks in at puberty. Now there's a variety of explanations for that, but no one knows for certain, and here's some of them. Okay, so first of all, sexual dimorphism in physical strength really emerges at puberty. So boys and girls are pretty evenly matched physically, but once puberty kicks in, boys are taller, stronger, heavier, and they're much stronger in terms of upper body strength. So women are at a disadvantage physically in relationship to anything that might have to do with physical combat. And so on those grounds, it makes sense for women to be somewhat more sensitive to threat. Okay, so then the uh, another explanation is that uh, women are more vulnerably sexually than men because they bear a much higher cost for reproduction, obviously, with pregnancy and protracted dependence of infants. And so it makes so they're, they're more vulnerable on the sexual front, so it makes, it makes sense for them to be more sensitive to any threat that's associated with sexual activity. And then the third explanation, and there may be more, is that women are charged, generally speaking, with the primary responsibility for infants. And infants are extremely dependent and vulnerable. And so you could make a case that adult women's nervous systems are actually adapted for the mother-child dyad and not for the, say, emotional well-being of the individual woman. And a woman needs to be threat-sensitive because she's going to be taking care of infants and, and extremely dependent children, and it makes sense for her to be more cognizant of threats as a consequence, even though the negative consequence of that for women and all of this is that women are much more likely to suffer from depression and anxiety than men. Uh, Cross-culturally, it's between three to one and five to one. 
Now, men have their associated pathologies. Men are more likely to be antisocial, for example, and to abuse alcohol. But women predominate on the negative emotion side. And so, and then I would say that's exacerbated, you know, if you hit puberty early, because you have to deal with these complexities of physiological transformation at a very young age. And so that's a difficult thing to handle emotionally. And then there's the additional consequence of whatever hormonal uh, turbulence might emerge as a consequence of the onset of puberty. So it's very common for young women to experience high levels of negative emotion and for those emotions to be focused on their body. Because another thing that's characteristic of female negative emotion is that the self-consciousness associated with that tends to focus very particularly on body shame and self-consciousness. And that might be because women are evaluated more rigorously on the basis of their physical appearance than men. Men are evaluated more harshly sexually, let's say, on the performance side, you know, with regard to socioeconomic status and so forth. But women are definitely evaluated more harshly by men and by each other in terms of their physical attractiveness. So that makes quite a complicated situation for girls who are making the transition into puberty. And a lot of them are depressed and anxious and that and develop an intense focus on their body. So I don't know how much of that was explained to you by your therapists or the medical professionals, but that's all well, that's all well documented psychological and medical information. I could keep up with the boys then and I had a lot of pride in that, but as the years went on, they started to get taller than me and outmatch me physically. And this did bring on a bit of distress for me. And, um, you know, as I got older, um, socialization beca began to become more sex oriented and I found it even harder to fit in with girls my age and but at the same time I was also starting to notice there's a divide between me and boys um, in several ways and there was there was a lot of loneliness for me because on one hand I didn't really feel like I was I was one of the girls but on the other hand I was right. losing my connection with some of my friends who I was close with and really, really cared about. And I also had some body image issues growing up as well. Um, I often talk about how social media played a role in it, but really it started from a very young age, actually. I mean, I grew up, I was born into a very image-oriented, very sex-oriented society. And, you know, before I hit puberty, I was looking forward to having a developed body and eventually going breasts. And... You know, once I hit puberty and once I hit puberty, I was, it wasn't what I expected. And I was really quite disappointed how I looked. I was very, very skinny. I was on the smaller chested side. And, you know, I grew up in an age where we kind of glorify bodies that are very, um, very voluptuous, um, lots of curves. People often use the phrase like body heavy, I mean, bottom heavy or hourglass, pear shape, mm -hmm. things like that. And I didn't look like that at all. I was, you know, I was, I was quite thin, a little on the muscular side. And if anything, my shoulders were probably the widest point in my body. And I mm -hmm. kind of had a complex over this. I, I also liked having my hair short. And because of all this, I felt like if anything, I didn't really look like a girl at all. 